We're interrupting normal programming to join the BBC News Desk for some breaking news. Welcome to the BBC News Desk. We have breaking news of a serious incident between Russian and NATO forces near the coast of Latvia. Although the details are uncertain, early reports indicate that a Russian surveillance aircraft was fired upon by naval vessels of NATO forces operating in that region after apparently straying into Latvian sovereign airspace. It's unclear at this stage whether the Russian aircraft was shot down or not. This incident comes in the wake of a similar event some time ago, in which two Russian pilots were killed after being shot down by Turkish surface-to-air missiles near the border with Syria. It's not known what caused this latest incident, or at exactly what time the conflict took place, but it is believed that it happened earlier today, and that Russian forces have returned fire. The government has convened a meeting of the Emergency Cobra Committee, and senior members of the British military have been seen entering 10 Downing Street. There were chaotic scenes earlier today as Prime Minister Theresa May was rushed back to Downing Street as details of the international crisis began to emerge. She had been due to attend a meeting with senior business leaders in the city today, followed by a cross-party governmental committee meeting on electoral reform, but these plans have been cancelled in light of current developments. A government spokesperson said that no statement will be issued until the situation becomes clearer. Kate Miller reports. News of the outbreak of military action between Russia and NATO has been greeted across the globe with expressions of concern and alarm. There are unconfirmed reports that Russian forces have retaliated by engaging in direct fire against several NATO warships. Two US cruisers, the USS Princeton and the USS Gettysburg, are reported to be in the region, but it's not known if they were directly involved in the incident. The Ministry of Defence has yet to confirm these reports, stating that the situation is changing rapidly and that they'd be making a formal statement in due course, but acknowledging that something very serious has happened. In Europe, senior military leaders have been meeting at regional NATO headquarters, indicating that a response to what they describe as unwarranted Russian aggression is being planned. A general military alert has been issued across Europe, including the deployment of over 50,000 NATO troops to key points along the central border to Russia and the activation of over 200,000 reserve troops from France, Germany, Holland and the UK. The first contingent of British troops has already left RAF Bryce Norton. All military leave has been cancelled and the mobilisation of all British forces nationally and internationally has been ordered by the government. And we're just receiving reports that at least one NATO warship has sustained serious damage as a result of direct fire from Russian forces. Details are unclear and the number of casualties remains unknown, but it's reported that at least one vessel has been sunk with major loss of life and that contact has been lost with a further two ships in the area. The US President Donald Trump has condemned the Russian military action calling on President Putin to pull back from what the US government has described as a reckless and warlike posture which can only lead to greater conflict. World leaders have expressed their condemnation of Russian military action, stating their support for US and NATO forces and their hope that a peaceful, negotiated settlement to the conflict can be achieved. The Pentagon has convened a meeting of the Joint Chiefs of Staff and a worldwide military alert has been declared for all US forces with immediate effect. We'll be bringing you further information on the US response to the situation as details emerge. The conflict in the Baltic Sea continues to escalate, with reports that a number of Royal Navy vessels have joined the battle. It's believed that HMS Lancaster and HMS Duncan are leading the British response and that HMS Northumberland is en route to provide additional support. The Royal Navy Trafalgar-class submarine HMS Torbay is believed to be in the region, but it is not clear whether it's involved in the conflict. The Ministry of Defence has declined to comment, stating that the military response to the situation would be proportionate, but that it would not be appropriate to discuss any details thereafter. Several destroyers from the Russian Baltic fleet have been spotted near the coast of Finland, indicating a potential major escalation in the scale of the conflict and increasing fears that the fighting may get out of hand before a political solution can be negotiated. 
In response to global condemnation of Russian military action, President Putin has stated that Russia will use whatever means are necessary to defend itself, including the use of its strategic military capabilities. Russian forces are already at a heightened state of combat readiness following significant military exercises over recent months and the deployment of the Russian S-400 advanced surface-to-air missile system along the central border between Russia and Western Europe. Reporting restrictions have been imposed due to the sensitivity of divulging troop movements, but we're hoping for an update from our local reporters in the region and from other news networks in due course. In the UK, the mobilisation of the armed forces is continuing, with a full recall of all reserve forces and heightened security at military bases and airfields. Typhoon fighter jets from 29 Squadron at RAF Coningsby in Lincolnshire and 6 Squadron at RAF Lossiemouth in Scotland have begun patrolling UK airspace and restrictions on civilian and commercial air traffic have been imposed around military and nuclear power facilities. The Ministry of Defence has ordered the dispersal of key military forces and strategic bomber aircraft to various bases across the country, and the British submarine fleet has left the naval bases at Fass Lane in Scotland and from Plymouth on the south coast. Traffic restrictions have been reported on certain motorways and access points, causing tailbacks in many areas and bringing traffic to a virtual standstill on parts of the M25. Emergency services and hospitals in the UK have also been placed on high alert. A senior spokesperson for the NHS has stated that it's important the UK is prepared for any eventuality, but that this should not be a cause of undue concern. And just to recap on the main points so far, a serious incident has been reported between Russian and NATO military forces in the Baltic Sea, apparently resulting in direct fire from Russian warships against US and British naval forces, resulting in the loss of at least one naval vessel, and with casualties now exceeding over 200 troops killed and several hundred more either injured or unaccounted for. It's not clear when the first incident took place, but it appears that sometime earlier today, a Russian surveillance aircraft was fired upon by NATO forces after apparently entering Latvian sovereign airspace. It's not known whether the Russian aircraft was shot down, and the Russian government so far has neither confirmed nor denied that this incident took place. A NATO spokesperson has reported significant troop movements in Russia near the borders of Latvia and Estonia, prompting fears that a much larger regional conflict is becoming inevitable. A full-scale military response is underway involving combined NATO forces, although the scale and severity of the conflict remains unclear. We're expecting a statement shortly from the British government following an emergency meeting of the Cabinet in a joint session with senior military leaders. It's clear, however, that the situation is extremely serious and is continuing to escalate. Downing Street has confirmed that all parliamentary sessions have been suspended for today and that heightened security measures have been put in place around major governmental and military facilities. Reporting restrictions have also been imposed on all major news networks, reflecting what the government described as a sensitive and volatile situation which represents a substantial and immediate threat to our national security. And with the latest report from the conflict, it's believed that a Russian-guided missile destroyer has been hit by a missile fired by the British naval fleet, apparently sustaining major damage with many casualties. Heavy fires on board have been reported as NATO forces continue to retaliate. Russian search and rescue vessels are on the scene, with additional support en route from their Baltic fleet, who are expected to arrive in the region shortly. And we do now have footage of the conflict from the region. This is the scene of Russian warships based directly off the coast of Finland. These are truly extraordinary scenes. Russian warships firing directly at US and British forces from NATO in what now must surely represent a state of war. We expect to receive a statement from Downing Street shortly about the escalating crisis and how British and international forces plan to respond to the situation.
And we've just heard that the government has passed the Emergency Powers Act, bringing the country into a formal state of war preparation and suspending many peacetime activities and functions. Central government in the UK has been suspended, and power has now been passed instead to a system of local officials dispersed across the country. Emergency response and civil defence authorities have been placed on the highest level of alert, and preparations are underway in case the UK itself comes under direct attack. And let's go live to NATO regional headquarters in Brussels, where defence and foreign ministers from various NATO member countries and their allies continue to arrive. One of the early arrivals is the Belgian Minister of Defence, Stephen van der Poot. Joining his counterparts from a growing number of NATO member countries and their allies, And we see the arrival of representatives of the Danish government. Yes, we believe that this is Michael Zilmer Johns, the Danish ambassador to NATO. And in the latest update on the conflict, fighter and surveillance quick reaction alert aircraft have left NATO combined air operations centers in Germany and Holland, as well as from NATO air force bases in the Baltic countries. There are reports that Russian heavy bombers have attacked the main NATO Air Force base in Lithuania, apparently resulting in heavy damage with many casualties. We understand that this is where combined forces from France, Spain and Portugal are based, mainly Typhoon and Mirage fighter jets.